been making, you know, producing for a lot of nerdcore acts for like six, seven years now. And the one thing I hadn't really done was actually like perform, you know, on stage with anybody. And me and uh, me and Schaefer work so well together. We've done a lot of projects in the past. And I'm and I one day we uh, I called him at a show and I was like, we should just do a collective like a group thing, like a you know like like a like a gang star type of you know uh, rapper producer you know both on stage at the same time type of deal. And it just kind of like evolved into into you know Department of Darkness. We've done so much work together over the years. It just seemed like to continue like releasing songs is. Shape of the Dark Lord, produced by Vince Vandal, seemed, I don't know, it seemed like we kind of moved past that. At this point, we were basically were a group, so we figured we'd just rebrand it with the group name and create material that was fully collaborative instead of just, he made a beat and I wrote some song lyrics to it. And it just, it's, 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 it's much more of like the, uh, of a band dynamic now. Coming from my uh, producer background, since I don't rap, um, all of my albums are just me featuring like a hell of a lot of people and I kind of want to just bring that into Department of Darkness because we could have easily just made a whole album where it's just Schaefer rapping over my beats which would have been fine too but I was I really like you know featuring other people and like showcasing their talents something like a lot of people come up to us and they're like you know Oh, I listened to your stuff, but never heard of this person before. So then I like dived into their discography. A really important element, I think, going forward, at, based, at least on this first record, is is having this huge collection of guests. Um, like I, I, there are people on this record that I've wanted to work with that I haven't on any of my solo stuff. And he even, you kind of mentioned at one point, like we had songs picked out with certain guests in mind. But as we were working on the record, we started making like lists of like, who's somebody that you've always wanted to work with that you haven't? And we kind of started crossing them off. And as we had like ended up with what, nine or 10 guests, um, we already started daydreaming about, all right, so who's left that we still want to work with? I, I think like an, another thing that's helpful um, for, for this act and, and doing it in a venue like MagFest is that in our, in our scene, in Nerdcore, there's so many collaborations and you have so many guests on your songs and then you'll like work really hard on a song and you'll get two guests on it and then you can never perform them live because your guests live in Seattle and Orlando and you can't get them in one place. But you do a show like MagFest, there's a pretty strong likelihood you're gonna get a majority of your guests in one place at one time. I play most anything except for sports games. They just kind of bore me. But I like things with high story and high interactivity. The more customization I can put into the story, the better so I really like story driven things like uh, I like I, I'm a big fan of the Quantum Dream series so like Heavy Rain and Detroit and um, I love Uncharted uh, I'm a big PlayStation fan because I just like all their their exclusives um, God, I don't I don't know if I have like a favorite just because I love so many um, I think if I had to narrow it down I like I really love the Persona series, and I really love Mass Effect. My heart is always with horror games, uh, and always will be. I love, I love the tension and atmosphere of horror games. I love. I don't know why I do because gaming is ostensibly uh, an escape from life, a way to like decompress. And I feel like I've spent so many sleepless nights just tense because I just spent nine hours running around with one bullet being chased by monsters. But I love like I love the Resident Evil games, specifically one, two, four, five, and seven. Um, I love the Silent Hill games. I love I love the bad Silent Hill games. I don't I, Homecoming. I loved it. I don't care. Uh, you played Outlast. I yeah, I did play Outlast, and I like I got tense thinking about playing <laughs> Outlast. I was like, this is great. It brought the atmosphere and the desperation of, of horror back to because horror gaming or horror games have kind of shifted into like action adventure games. Outlast brought it back, and I was like, great, it's what it's supposed to do, and I'm lying in bed, like, my heart racing. <laughs> MagFest is by far my favorite. Like, it, for one, like, I, so most of my, most of the conventions I go to are, like, anime cons, because that's, 
the majority of what there is on offer, but I I would consider myself more of a gamer than an anime fan, um, and I you know I love music also, and this is a great combination of the two. Plus, as a bonus, all my like you know nerd rap friends come and have fun here, and they do shows and panels and hang out. So this is like usually the best weekend of the year for me. Yeah, MAGFest has very quickly become my favorite of the cons that I attend. It's it's uh, big enough that it feels that it's so dense that I can feel like I can spend three days and not even see everything that's happening. But it's also inviting enough that I don't feel like I'm drowning in it. Um, and yeah, everything's really friendly and warm and there's this really pervasive sense of community. I mean, look at, look at this. Like, how often, especially in this day and age, how often do you ever even see an arcade? Like, yeah, <laughs> there, there's so few and far between at this point. And you just know you can come to MAGFest. And if you want to veg out for five days in a video game or an arcade, just playing your brains out, you can. And it's just a cool aspect to it. I yeah, love it. It's weird. It's like a, it, It's kind of like being in a video game representation of life in a way because yeah, this is great. I haven't seen an arcade in decades. So it's like you walk in, you see all these cabinets. Oh my God, this looks just like these arcades that I would go to when I was young. Except that it doesn't because I have never been in an arcade this size any point in my life. It's like this exaggerated version. There's like just ammo I know hidden around in this room and the floor. And there's, there's a side quest and there's a key. There's a key on that guy. Uh, it's, yeah. Uh, it's great though, I'm gonna play some games today.